right, everybody, let's get started with our second talk tonight. And we're going to learn about growing pears in North Dakota. Pears are vigorous trees, but they're not always hardy. And so here to share with us the findings of her research is Kathy Wiederhold. Kathy's the manager of the two and a half acre Northern Hardy Fruit Evaluation Project at the Carrington Research and Extension Center. She's been there since 2006. The orchard has 10 different kinds of fruits and Kathy loves them all. But pears are her newest fruit. And so she's got some new information to provide for us tonight. Kathy, welcome to the forums. Hi, thank you, Tom. Welcome. Let's see. I am going to talk about pears, and uh, we've been growing them since, I believe, 2015 at the Research Center. And um, they're unique. They're kind of, they're nice. They're, you know, really delicious, which is, which is wonderful. So um, let, let's get into these and see, and see what they're about. So pear trees are not apple trees, right? So that sounds that sounds obvious, but you know, if you if you've been pruning apple trees, you might think, oh, pear tree will be easy, but it's really not the same. They're 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 different. So we'll we'll talk about that. And um, when you when you uh, look to buy pear trees. Um, most of them are not hardy enough for North Dakota. You know, uh, what I've listed here, if you, uh, if you find something labeled extremely hardy or very hardy, if you could confirm that it's suited for zone three or four, I mean, three is of course better, but there's not many that uh, are zone three. And then you want to see something that's hardy to negative 30 or negative 40 Fahrenheit. So you, we do need something quite hardy for a pear tree. Um, also, maybe your description of the pear. We'll talk about when your fruit ripens. And, you know, I think about Honeycrisp apples all the time. Our Honeycrisp, boy, they are barely, I would say they're never ready before October 1st in, in Carrington. And we always get a freeze around October 4th, October 10th, uh, more so around that 4th, 5th, 6th time. Uh, and I mean a hard freeze. That's when it's below 27 degrees or so. So um, if you could get your apple trees and your pear trees that will ripen in late September, by late September, that would be your, your best bet. Um, and the other thing about pears is there are some self-fruitful varieties, but a lot of them need two varieties to actually set pears. And, you know, maybe your neighbor has an ornamental pear. There's a few of them out there. There's Prairie Gem from NDSU Research. Um, that, that ornamental pear will pollinate your, uh, your pear, your fruitful pear tree. But um, if you have the space, get two. Uh, and they do take up a lot of space. They're not, they're not a small tree. They're not a small tree. There aren't any dwarf pears. So, uh, so when you think about your pears, then you have to think about tree care, right? And when you plant an apple tree, you generally have kind of wide roots. Um, they're kind of shallow and they're wide. And we know how to deal with those. And when you have a pear tree, they have what they call more of a carrot root. You will get... Um, kind of a long tap root, really. It's a kind of a tap root. It might be cut off from the, the place you get it from, but um, they've, they've done the proper thing to it, so it should be okay. But they've got some side branching on those roots, but mainly this, this tap root. So when you plant that tree, you know, you have to be prepared to dig a little deeper for that center area, perhaps. But um, I recommend staking these. I mean, all the time we don't recommend staking your trees anymore, but for a pear tree, I'm going to say you should stake them for one or maybe two years, you know, but use a loose support. You don't want your, you don't want your uh, strings to be like super tight. You want them to be kind of loose. So your tree can wiggle in the wind. When your, when your roots wiggle in the wind, they grow faster, stronger, better, um, uh, they will help support your tree. So I would use I prefer three, but a minimum of two supports that can go on your tree. And I use like some kind of a T post and then string to some of these, um, these nylon um, straps that go around the tree just to, just to support them for those first couple of years. You know, we didn't at first, I thought they'd be fine. And yeah, like in a week or so we had a wind and two of them uh, kind of laid over a little bit. So I had to, then I, then I got the stakes on them. <laughs> so, so, 
Pear trees are also really vigorous. And uh, this is where they're not like apple trees. You need to keep your pruning very light, like not even prune them for the first, say, three or four or five years of their life, um, because it really stimulates the, the water sprouts, you know, the vertical shoots that come up on apple trees when you prune. So uh, pear trees are just, they're just a little different. Um, what I really suggest is uh, shaping your tree those first few years that you have it. I think the tree in this picture is probably been in the ground for one year. That's about the size it looks. Um, I made spacers. I used, uh, well, we have all kind of little uh, wooden um, stakes that go in the ground for marking, marking things out in the field. I also bought some lath and then I have access to a bandsaw, but you could use like a hand coping saw or something, but I use the bandsaw to cut these really deep V's in the end of the, um, of the lath. And then I use those to make spacers between the branches. You want to create a 45 degree angle, you know, so here's, here's your, uh, 90 or whatever. Well, this would be 90, right? But you want a 45 degree angle. Uh, that would be the strongest crotch angle, make the strongest branch as uh, it's kind of a compromise between branch strength and then um, vertical shoots do not produce fruit, but horizontal shoots, horizontal branches produce too much fruit. So you're kind of doing a compromise strength and then the amount of fruit that you're going to get. So you want to kind of go for this 45 degree uh, crotch angle between the trunk and the scaffold branches. So use these spacer for quite a while. Um, you'll laugh at my next picture. This is the young tree and then um, use them for about three to five years. And uh, here's great. Right on the right hand side there, uh, that is my husband calls that my art project. I think it's a science project, but uh, either way, science and art kind of go together. Um, and on the left side, uh, showing you this very upright growth of, of the pear trees. And they're, they're all like that. And even once they get older and they start to settle down, uh, any pruning you do is still going to make these vertical water shoots on the, on the trees. Um, I've taken some pictures, but it's just really difficult to uh, show them against a green grass background. So uh, you'll have to take my word for it that they really make upward water sprouts when you prune. So another thing with tree, tree care, um, this picture on the left is an is a, is a example of sun scald. Sun scald can happen on any tree, can happen on maples, it happens on apples, it happens on these uh, pear trees. Um, this example is actually the variety named Stacy, and it's the only one I've seen it on. So Stacy is probably maybe on the edge of hardiness for North Dakota, I'm not sure, but um, the sun, Usually what happens with sun scald is that in like now, March, when it's very cold, the sun is really strong, right? The, our streets are melting here in Carrington, but there's snow everywhere, only maybe 12 or 15 degrees today. But that sun is warm on the dark bark and it starts to melt all the sap that's under the bark and then stuff moves around. And then at night it freezes, expands, and it breaks open the cells and kills them. And so what it looks like in a year or two when you can actually see it is, is this on the left-hand side. This, um, you can see down to the wood of the tree. Um, there's an opening and the young right in here. This is new bark that is reforming. This, it will grow and will cover over this area. This is the wood, um, but uh, you, wanna, you want to avoid that. Okay, so on the right-hand side, uh, what I did is I went to the, our, our local running store. I got the cheapest sprayer I could, which luckily was only $10 the year that I did this. And I went to uh, the store and if you can get cheap latex paint, good luck. It's so expensive now. Um, but at the time I was able to buy latex paint for less uh, pre-pandemic, less, less cost. Anyway, just use uh, flat white or semi-gloss. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I think I bought flat white and I diluted it 50% with water, put it in the sprayer, and then I just sprayed. And, you know, don't wear anything good. Don't wear anything good and don't do it on a windy day. And you want to spray like the south and west side. Southwest is, is mainly where the sunshine happens. And that's because the, the hottest part of the sunny day 
in March is in the afternoon and the, and your, and the sun has moved to the Southwest. And so that's where you're going to see this damage. So you want to press uh, spray the south and west sides of your trees with this paint. Uh, like I said, it's good for apple trees, good for uh, pear trees, good for any tender, thin bark tree, like in maple trees. Um, you know, it, just don't worry what your neighbors think. Just do it for the health of your tree. In a few years, your the bark will get um, thicker, it, you know, it gets gnarly, and then um, the sun won't bother it so much then. Some trees are maybe always susceptible to it, but once the once the bark gets thicker, then um, you won't have as much trouble. So um, the fruiting, fruiting of pears, people are always like, oh, when is my tree going to fruit? It's been in the ground three years. Well, you know, this, our, our variety, uh, Shorter Hardy ND, actually began fruiting in its second year in the ground. It only had like two or three pears and um, it had two pears. And I went to look at them and I just, I just touched it and it fell one of them fell. And then the next day, a squirrel got the other one. So, oh, well, but my recommendation is really don't encourage your young trees to have fruit. And I would discourage them um, when until your tree is about five years old. I mean, and that's, you know, maybe it's been in the ground three years, but a tree when you plant it is usually about uh, two years old, maybe three years old. But um, I think your tree should be in the ground at least three years, maybe five years before it has fruit, because you need to get the trunk to a nice sturdiness and you need to get your scaffold branches to be sturdy. If you are letting heavy fruit crop those really small branches that you're going to get, you know, a weeping shape instead of an upright shape and you're going to get branches broken and um when I do let a tree start having fruit I actually remove the outer fruit and I just let it have as a few fruits towards the inside of the tree where the branches are uh, more tough. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so when will your pear fruit? So it depends on the variety. Same for apples. This Schroeder Hardy ND began fruiting in the second year. They've had fruit every single year. Super, super productive. Um, our other trees did not really have pears until the fifth year. And I've got two trees of each variety. And in year five, it was weird. Just one, one tree of the two varieties had fruit. And then um, we had no fruit the next year because it was uh, the drought. Well, we always, I feel like we're always in a drought in Carrington, but it was the second year of a pretty strong drought here. No, no fruit. And then um, this past year in 2022, uh, both of the trees of each variety had some fruit or a lot of fruit just depended. So, um, so it takes a little while, it takes a little while. They have to get mature, they have to get fruitful. So the one thing I will say about pear fruiting is that the pear fruit attachment seems really brittle. So um, what happened to me is I was on vacation and I came back on September 1st and I ran right to the orchard and I looked at the pears and I said, wow, I should, tomorrow I'm going to have to pick some of these. And there was a thunderstorm overnight. And the next day, all the fruit was on the ground. So a high wind or a thunderstorm can um, knock the fruit down. I got almost, almost no pears that year just because their connection just seems, just seems kind of brittle. So this is what I saw, you know, so that's pretty disappointing. That's from the Schroeder Hardy ND with all the fruits on there. Um, you know, they were still pretty green and kind of small that year, but um, it's too bad. So um, let's see, fruit harvesting. Uh, this is, it's kind of another science slash art project to harvest your pears, I think. And I've been a little frustrated because one of my varieties, and I think I'll talk about that next. Um, but the normal suggestion for harvesting a pear is that when your fruit turns from dark green to light green, and when the lenticels, which are the little tiny pores on the pear, when they turn from green to brown, and you can kind of see this in the picture, the bigger greener fruit on the left, uh, it has spots on it, but the centers of those spots are kind of whitish or light green. And then in the middle one, for sure, you should be able to see this, that there are very tiny brown spots in the center of those pores. Those are the lenticels. That's how a, a, a fruit breathes through its, through its lenticels. Um, but when they turn from green to brown, the whole fruit color is dark green to light green. And then you, um, the same way you test an apple, you put your hand under the fruit 
and you lift it a little and then you twist it. And if the fruit comes right off in your hand, it's definitely ready to be harvested. And for a pear, that really that's when the pear is mature. A pear is not generally ripe on the tree. It's mature on the tree. And then you pick them and you put them in the cooler. And this is, so they're not ripe. Generally, generally there are some, but that generally you you pick a pear at maturity. And then what do you do with it? This is, it's so complicated. Pears are also different from one another. Um, so they, they ripen off the tree. And this lets the fruit, it converts its starches to sugar. So if you bite a freshly picked pear, it's probably not very sweet and kind of hard and grainy, but eventually those starches in there will convert to sugars and make it juicy and sweet like we would expect them to be. But how do you ripen them? This is the, the, the million dollar question. Uh, some pears need to be stored at room temperature after you pick them. Most would like to be a cool temperature or a refrigerator temperature. That's probably the best way to keep a pear for a long time if your pear variety goes along with it is to put them in the refrigerator. Then the next question is, how long do you put them in the refrigerator or room temperature or in a cool place like your basement or a, or a root cellar? Um, is it a few weeks? Is it three months? Who knows? Uh, it just depends on your variety. And then a general cue for ripeness on pears is when you kind of, you squeeze, you gently squeeze the stem area of a pear right up by the top. And if that gives, then that usually means your pear is ripe. So um, I have felt so frustrated. And uh, like I said, a science project, proper harvest, proper ripening time, because one of our varieties, I, I think it's a bad variety. So um Oh, I, we'll talk about it still in a second. Okay. Um, so here with the ripening, you know, this is where I said, you don't, it's, it's hard to know what to do. This variety pictured here is Patton. And um, Patton is from South Dakota. So that, that's nice. It's close. It's probably hardy for here. And it, and it is for us. But um, so I pick them when they change from dark green to light green. And then when I take them out of the refrigerator and put them at room temperature to, to, to ripen and soften and maybe turn slightly yellower, they spoil inside. So like every single one was spoiling inside. <clears throat> so those were the earlier ones I picked. So then I left some on the tree. I had better luck when the fruit was more of a light yellow. And then I refrigerated it and then a week, two weeks, a month, well, about a month maybe. Um, then I took them out and just ate them because if I left them at room temperature for any amount of time, they turn brown inside. So, you know, part of it might be how our soil conditions are, how like our calcium magnesium balances are in the fruit because of uh, the kind of soil we have. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not an expert on this. Uh, but I have read uh, there's some comment in somebody's something or other that says Patton is one of the favorite pears and it's smooth and buttery. Well, ours are not smooth and buttery. They're crispy, but they were still good. They were still a good pear. So I probably still have some work to do to figure out like what's the best way to harvest a Patton pear. So our varieties that we have, the, the ones I'm listing right here, these three are so far the best ones that we've grown out of the six varieties we have. Um, Nova is the first one listed, a very nice pear, a pear you would expect from the grocery store. They're very smooth and tender. They call it buttery when they're smooth like that. Um, they're juicy. They're very good. You, you would, uh, you know, you very similar to a grocery store pear. That's, I, I guess, what I can say. Um, I picked them at light green, I refrigerated them, and then when I brought them out at room temperature, they turned kind of light yellow and they softened up beautifully. They're kind of a mid-September, early to mid-September, they start ripening. Patton, which I mentioned, also a good size pear. Uh, the, you know, um, um, three inches is what I say, and that's kind of, um, kind of diameter, kind of diameter. Uh, but they have been crispy for us. Um, so, so far, I've been letting them hang to a light yellow on the tree, picking them, refrigerating them and just eating them. So they're ready pretty late, kind of mid September. And then I had to pick some right before the frost this year, the freeze this year, which was in early October. So um, they are a little bit almost too late for North Dakota, but you know, um, they were still okay. And then the last one here is Stacy. I think it's good. 
I think it's good. I am not sure. I feel kind of bad about this, but the last two years that it has had fruit, like uh, two years ago and this year, I was on vacation and it ripens somewhere in the third or the fourth week of August. And um, I, I just uh, could not see it. So I, I, whatever, they were overripe by the time I got home, the wasp had eaten out the inside. So they're kind of a medium fruit. They should be good. Um, so I'm going to, hopefully next year, I will be able to get these pears. We'll see. We'll see. So these three pears, these are the last three of the six we bought and planted. These are, I would not recommend based on what we've seen. The Ayers pear, uh, it is listed as extremely hardy or very hardy in the St. Lawrence catalog, but it died back two years. The first year, a little bit. Second year, to the ground, and it was a bad open winter. I ex expected it, and it, it did die. So Ayers, no go. Uh, Ely, Ely is from the, uh, also all of these are from St. Lawrence Nursery. Um, and it's a smaller tree, which is nice. I almost think it could be an interstem grafting, maybe to make pears a little smaller, but um, it has some spines, you know, plum trees do, some pear trees have spines, but the fruit has been very small and tannic. When I look at the description, it says small and sweet and juicy. But uh, ours are small and tannic. They have turned uh, yellow on the tree. I've picked them so they can turn yellow in the refrigerator or out of the refrigerator. Um, they've fallen off the tree yellow, meaning they should have been definitely ripe uh, on the tree. Um, but they have not been good. I have not been able to eat one. Really, really tannic, uh, almost worse than a aronia because they also have acidity. But the catalog says they ripen in uh, October, which is really kind of late. So I'm not sure if we can actually ripen them here even. And then the last one is Schroeder Hardy ND. Very vig vigorous, very productive. Um, the fruit is pretty nice size, but it tastes terrible. It tastes terrible. And there is something about the Vitgo pair. The Schroeder Hardy ND and Vitgo pair are supposed to be the same pair from the same tree. But uh, the, the one they call Vitco is supposed to taste bad. And the one that tastes is Schroeder is supposed to taste good. And mine tastes bad. So I think I have the wrong graft in the trees that I bought. So uh, I have informed the nursery about this. So who knows? Uh, we'll see. So let's go. We're at about 21 minutes. So <clears throat> I think this is about it. Um, other pairs that I have... Um, I've heard are good. And I've heard this from multiple people over the years that I've been here. So I think these three are pretty good. Uh, Summer Crisp from University of Minnesota. Um, this one ripens on the tree. This is the unusual one that ripens on the tree. It's crunchy and it says it stores, it stores pretty well. I haven't, I didn't try to grow these because people said that they were probably okay for North Dakota. So uh, the other one, Golden Spice, kind of a small medium pair, uh, used by a lot of the winemakers. So um, I've heard that something about after storage, then it gets this spicy flavor. I don't know if many people know about the spicy flavor. Uh, and then Yuri. Yuri is uh, Eusiriensis, uh, an Asian uh, pair, from a pair from Asia. And they're quite small, but tasty. They don't last very long at all, but uh, super, super hearty. So... Lastly, this is the last slide here. Uh, pears are tasty. I made this pear galette and uh, hopefully you have access to this uh, afterwards or write this down, but I got it from this blog called The Kitchen. And if you, you know, look for pear galette, uh, you would find this. I made the recipe, like it said, it talked about frangipane. I don't know how to say that. Frangipane, probably said a different way in French. And it's like an almond buttery thing you put on the on the crust first, and then you put the pears on there. I use the patent pears I because it calls for a, a firmer pear. So I use the patent pear. I tell you what, how good this is. I think about this darn thing all the time. And my husband asked me about making it. So maybe I have to get pears from the grocery store and finally remake it. I have more frangipane in the freezer. So um, yeah. Uh, they are good. And I, I hope people will try pears. You know, I said they're a big tree. They're kind of a little daunting. But if you have space, you know, it's worth a try. And, uh, you know, all trees are eventually firewood. So yeah, you just give it a try. <laughs> oh, I should uh, maybe in the, and this is just for the, um, the chat, maybe there is a handout. 
And uh, what I did in that handout is I talked to a guy named Greg Krieger, and he's from Galesville area. And he has, he's talked to a lot of people over the years about payers, and he's kept a list. And so I have uh, kind of edited and given you that list in the handout of payers that may, 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 may be okay for North Dakota. It's always a gamble. Like I said, that Ayers pair said extremely hardy and then it winter killed. So you, you just don't know until you try it yourself. So, all right, what do we got going on? Okay, Tom? thanks, Kathy. Well, you know, Kathy, are you telling me we, I, we can't believe a seed catalog all the time? Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? I love the seed catalogs that say, oh, this kind of fruit is sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet. And then you try it and they're all sour. <laughs> you know, Kathy, that's why we have you. Yeah, that do is research. Right. That's why that's why we need you to tell us what's the right one. <laughs> I'm I'm serious about that. Okay, here we go. Uh, there's two Paul pear trees. Never heard of a Paul pear. Mm -mm. They're close together. One is a Crasula tree. Why did I start with this question? Last year, <laughs> zero fruit. Year before, maybe one or two, but nothing to write home about. This person's from Manitoba, so it's a Paul pear. They're close together. But they're not getting any fruits. So what would you say for somebody who's not, maybe the tree's not old enough yet? Maybe that's it. Yeah, they're probably not asking the question, though, if they're old enough. Um, did you say they're both, they're both they're the same Manitoba. variety? Uh, two Paul pears, and then there's a Crasula tree. Oh, so okay, which is supposed to maybe cross-pollinate it. Yeah. You know, I they always say maybe you've got too much fertility in your soil or... I really don't know that they may not cross pollinate, but if, if you think they're supposed to, if, if other, if the catalog said they're supposed to, there's that. Um, sometimes they just take a long time. Uh, the um, right. sweet 16 apple tree, 10 years before we even saw any fruit on those trees. So I would copy. do like an apple tree. Maybe if you can take a branch and weight it down. So it's below horizontal during the growing season and then let it back up at the end of the growing season, it should have accumulated sugars that maybe will uh, encourage it to fruit the next year. And then that fruiting should spread throughout the tree. That's the like safest way. Maybe they can see, did it, did it bloom well, you know, to start with that. Yeah. Could be bee activity, could be issues. How about some more companion planting here? Does will seckle uh, pear trees cross pollinate with patten? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Are it, seckles hardy I'm sure here? it would. I'm sure it would. I think it would because this picture on the last slide of mine is actually an ornamental pear and they will cross pollinate. As long as they bloom at the same time, they'll cross pollinate. Yeah. Okay. And here we go. Uh, old trees never used a spacer. Is it possible to begin shaping these old trees? You can always try to shape them. You know, just don't do very much. Just, uh, you know, it's going to take you, if it, if an apple tree took you three years, maybe you should work on this for four or five years. I would just not shape, not, not take too much out of them. But and you, even, put you know, spacer. I try and they still make water sprouts. So, uh, yeah, but you put the spacer on the younger wood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, need to be able to push it. I, I didn't know if you were talking yeah. about like spacers or if you're trying to prune it into shape. Both, huh? Well, pears, I think pears are one of the most upright of all trees. Yeah. They, they just want to go up. They just handle it. I would just let them. But it is nice to get, get that center opened up a little bit before they get mature. This guy's neighbor's got a lot of pears, but all the pears are small. So what are the size of the fruits in your pictures? What size of fruits? Were those three um, inches across you were talking you see about? my head? If you can do this with your finger, they're not quite, they're not quite that big. But um, if you cross your fingers about an inch or so, they're nice. They're a nice size pear. Some of them are smaller. And um, I don't know if I can, um, let me see. I'm going to go back here. You see this? I don't know. You guys can still see the slides, right? Yes. yes. On the bottom left-hand side, those are both Schroeder Hardy MD pears. One tree had barely any fruit and the other tree was loaded and I didn't thin it. And so that's the difference between, uh, you know, a, a, a thinned tree and a loaded tree. A loaded tree will have very small fruit. How about Kathy? Have you ever heard of the early gold pear? I have not. I have not. 
I've grown it. It's great. It's a great, it's a great, oh. it's one of those Yuri. That's a Yuri okay. uh, oh, selection. It might be in my handout it's list. It's in your handout. Print it out. Okay. It's in your handout. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, it is in Bismarck. I don't know about, so, I, and I think those you Syrian pears in general are zone three. So yeah. we should have success with them anywhere in North Dakota. So when you paint your trees, Kathy, how far up the tree trunk do you paint your latex paint? You know, uh, with the sprayer, you can go maybe a little higher. And I probably had a ladder out there. I'm not sure. Um, but I would go up for as big of wood as you can, you know, get it until the bark is small or the branch is small. Go up as high as you can it, it, when the tree is hurt. young. It just looks ugly. It doesn't yeah. hurt. And it's you put it on the southwest project. side, right? If you right. use pale pink or pale green or something like that, then you cannot know. do that. <laughs> and it's got to be white. That's the whole purpose, right? To reflect well, off I think the a sun's pale color rays. Was, a pale color is okay. <laughs> oh, you're, you're just a rebel. You just like to push the envelope, don't you? Yeah. How about, do you recommend culling a pear tree? Maybe an what old pear tree. What does culling a pear tree mean? Do you mean to thin the fruit? Maybe? Mm-hmm. How about just, yeah. When I think of culling, I think about cutting it down. Cutting That's it down what is what I think for cull. Is that what you Maybe think? they'll write another question. Yep. Well, what would you say about an old pear tree. Would you would you ever think about cutting down a tree on the prairie, on the North Dakota uh, prairie? Is that a well? Sin? If you have another one to put in its place, why not? You know, That's right. um, you can use your pear wood for making smoked meat. So there you go. Um, but you you know, I mean, if it's not fruiting anymore, if if you have the space, you can leave it. If you, um, but sometimes old trees will harbor diseases too. You know, yeah. so it it's up to you. I'll tell you what I think about that, Kathy, with apples and apples, especially an apple tree is like a person. It can live a hundred years, but once it hits 40, it starts going downhill. (laughs) So you have to be realistic. How about, uh, did you want to talk about any insect or disease situations that we have to worry about with pears? The only disease I maybe mentioned in the handout er, is uh, fire blight. That's the major concern with pear trees is they're very susceptible to fire blight. That's about it. I don't know much else for insects. That's the killer. Yeah. As soon as somebody tells me they got calls me with a pear question, I know yeah. it's fire blight <laughs> pretty much. How about uh, when you paint a tree, Kathy, does that allow the bark to breathe or should it be using something like burlap instead? What do you think about that? You know, I mean, I can't specifically say, um, but it's recommended. It is it's recommended practice with apple yeah. trees and pear yes. trees, uh, yes. you know, and you're only doing half the tree and, you know, you don't have to put it on super thick. So, yeah, it's it's the tree. I've never fine. read anything that it's no a problem. No, it's not a problem. How about, do you have to worry about bunnies? Do bunnies like to eat pears? I don't know that, but I'm sure they do. I put wire around them just like I did the apple trees. So you put a, a, like a quarter inch hardware cloth ring around the base of the tree. Yeah. How about, you know, is a Parker tree hardy enough? What do you think about that? Parker is not as hardy as Patton. So I would not go for the Parker is what I've read. You know, I've just, just different stuff. My, my Parker's hardy in zone four, yeah, well, but not, right. in, but not in zone, but I, I wouldn't go to zone three with that thing. Okay. How about Kathy? Do you know this? I don't know this. Is gold, would a golden spice cross with a Parker? To, cause they're, they're different. Pyrus Eucerianus and Pyrus communis. Yeah. Would they cross each other? Would they uh, fertilize each other? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, maybe not. You know, and, and most of the stuff you read is about the European pears, which are most yeah. of the pears we get in the grocery store. So right. I don't know. You don't get to read much about uh, Northern hardy pears. I will try to ask um, Jim Luby. He's a plant breeder, yeah, tree breeder Minnesota. in Minnesota. I'm going to ask Jim Luby about that. That's a good question. How about do, do you water a pear any different than you water an apple tree? No. Okay. No. They're pretty hardy. How do you stop a deer from eating the fruit? You put them in your freezer. The fruit? Oh, your fruit? Or the deer. <laughs> you still put the deer in the freezer. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. I think I know what you're talking I about. Know. Um, I know. You know, you're just going to have to. What I've done with younger trees where I've had a lot of deer 
is uh, take the like two by four inch wire and um, you can be a couple feet off the ground and make a circle around that tree with some T-posts because the deer won't go under the tree. And if you have it out far enough, the deer, they won't jump over it or up or something like that. So hmm. if you just kind of interfere with where their face goes, it kind of oh, okay. bothers high up, the deer. How high up do you go at that? Well, I mean, I would put it up like at your head height to belly height or whatever. Just make a ring around the tree, out away from the tree. And um, they don't want to go under it. That part I've read from the DNR over the years. Okay. How about you uh, have to worry about thinning out the fruit in springtime? I, if you thin your fruit, you'll get bigger fruit. Um, on the other hand, you have to don't thin it too much because your pear tree is so vigorous that it's good to have the fruit slow it down. But um, you'll you'll get bigger fruit if you thin it. Okay. How about uh, have you ever seen like a little slug that attacks the leaves and turns mm. them brown? I have Are not you? seen it on the pears, but I get it on aronia. Um, they're pear slug sawflies in your yard. You're supposed to be able to blast them off with water. Uh, you can also use a spinosad uh, pesticide, insecticide. Uh, that I know spinosad works against them. So pyrethrins, I'm not sure because they are a fly. They're not a caterpillar. Um, I don't know if that works or not, but I know a spinos spinosad or spinosad will work against them. Usually and that's pretty yeah. safe for humans. Oh yeah. And parasites are not usually killer no significant they're just more of a nuisance in most yeah, cases yeah. How but if about, it's really bad you might have to do something yep definitely get that blast of garden especially hole. if it's several years in a row then yeah this something. person this person's got a hard situation because they got those pear slugs and then the trees are 13 years old and no fruits oh still barren oh so they have two different varieties and but they flower at different times. Mm. Ah, that might be a real clue. Better try another variety. You know, whatever flowers later, you might consider taking a branch off if that's possible. And um, you can smash the, smash the end that you cut, put it in a vase of water, bring it inside, and it, you should be able to get it to bloom sooner and then just set it by the pear tree that's blooming earlier. Okay, that's called forcing. Forcing, right? Yeah. Okay, let's it might go. help. Uh, yeah, just plant another tree. That's, that's, <laughs> that's I think, the easy way to go. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's go our chat box here, see if there's anything over here. Um, get, will a Yuri pear work in Western North Dakota? It should work. Yeah. That's almost like a weed. That's a, that's a yeah. tough one. Have you ever heard of a Hudar, H-U-D-A-R, Hudar, Hudar pear? Pears. Um, I have, and I, I just don't really know. I don't know anything about them, so. Yeah. Um, uh, they talk about how these Eucerian pears are used in conservation plantings. Mm -hmm. are, are, and, but we would also say they're of value in an orchard situation. Some of them are just ornamental and they'll never taste good because that like prairie at the research orchard, we, we have one of the, I think we have the parent tree of pra prairie gem, which is um, mm. very small pears. It's ornamental, uh, but we have other seedlings around it and they have a lot of pears and they pollen, they cross pollinate with everything, but they, um, um, you know, they're not good uh -huh. to eat, but yet the Yuri the Yuri and the early gold are Eucerian also. So somebody got lucky and those were tasty. Yeah. yeah so. Don't grow peri gem for the fruit. No. That's, that's not <laughs> the purpose. Um, let's say my tree got suns called Kathy. What should I do about it? Well, uh, in the beginning, I would try to maybe cut away that bark. If you're getting damp conditions, you might want to cut away the bark that's on the outside and that's dead because it could harbor funguses underneath there. So you want to let it dry out. And I would just kind of maybe give that tree a little extra water in dry periods um, just to just so it has some oomph to, to yeah. close. It needs to close over that, that um, burnt area. So... 
um, don't paint it or anything, just let it naturally heal. And, um, and if it's scalded once, I would definitely paint the area around it. I mean, you don't have to use a sprayer. You can use a brush. The first time I ever did this to apple trees, I just used a brush. And, um, but the sprayer is definitely easier. Yeah. And, but it's also sun scald is not a killer. It's generally just a narrow vertical yeah. crack. So it's just, yeah. it's just too bad, just too bad, but it's okay. And it takes a long time to heal, right, Kathy? It takes. It does. It can take several years, yeah. like maybe five years or more. Depends on how right. vigorous it will grow. Right. So, okay, Kathy, right. you solved our, our question about can we grow pears in North Dakota? Sounds yeah. promising. I see. And we have question. to rely on you. <laughs> to find I see one line. question about somebody pruned their pear young and got water sprouts like me. Um, this year, I tried pruning them in summer after they had fruit on them. And I will uh, report back someday and see if that worked because cherry, plum, apricot trees, the stone fruits, you should prune them after they set fruit. So I'm, I'm trying this with my pear trees to see if it'll help. So what about you know. fire blight? You're begging for fire blight when you do oh, that. Oh, am I? In the you're summer? You're making a wound during the growing season. That's when fire yeah, blight gets active. but you're supposed to for black rot, so who knows? I, I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm skeptical about that because <laughs> I, I, fire blight's so devastating. That's just, that's, well, that's, that's nothing to mess around with. No. But well, okay, this is why we have you to do the research and we look forward to your results. <laughs> I really mean that, Kathy. Keep it keep yeah. it going there in Carrington. It's a, you got the okay. most interesting research at NDSU, I think. Keep it going. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm.